Hello, today I'm going to present a short webinar on appropriate uses of radiosurgery for the treatment of meningiomas. So when we talk about radiosurgery, we're talking about um, very focused beams of radiation. And sometimes this is a concept that is um, difficult for patients to understand. We kind of think of this science fiction um, zapping of uh, an object um, that we see from these Star Wars type of films. But uh, um, I'm hoping that by the end of the uh, presentation today, you'll understand the, the real physics behind the uh, radiosurgical treatment or the use of focused radiation to treat meningiomas. So there's a uh, first thing to understand is uh, that there are different types of radiosurgery machines. And um, you may hear these names kind of uh, talked about um, when discussing radiation for your meningioma. The first type of machine is called a linear accelerator. And there are uh, different types of companies that make linear accelerators. The CyberKnife is the machine that I use at Stanford. It is um, uh, uh, a subset of linear accelerator. Uh, Truebeam, um, Novalis are all um, trade names for machines that are linear accelerators. And then um, Gamma Knife and Proton Beams are other forms of radio surgery machines uh, that treat um, uh, tumors. So for the purpose of this webinar, I'm specifically going to talk about the machine that I'm the most familiar with and the machine that I use, and that's specifically the CyberKnife. So a linear accelerator is um, a uh, machine that accelerates electrons to a very high speed. And these electrons are then um, essentially shot at a metal target. And this collision between the electrons um, creates an X-ray beam, which can be used to target radiation to the patient. So in this cartoon here, this is a linear accelerator. Um, electrons are, are um, accelerated or sped down this tube. It strikes a metal target here, um, which then, and that collision between the electron and the metal creates a X-ray um, beam, which can be directed to treat uh, the patient. So this, this is a complex physics slide here, and I'm, um, I'm just presenting it just to, uh, so that uh, you understand kind of the, the, the science behind it. But essentially from a patient standpoint, uh, all the patient does is they lie on a table, and this is the linear accelerator, all that physics and electron acceleration is occurring inside this box here, and radiation beams are then targeted to the patient. Uh, here's a more detailed uh, picture of uh, the CyberKnife. So there are a number of treatment uh, components that we see. First is the treatment table here. This is what the patient lies on during the treatment. The uh, second component of the CyberKnife is this uh, linear accelerator. And again, this is where uh, the source of the uh, X-ray beams come out that treat your tumor. The uh, linear accelerator is mounted onto a robotic arm, and this is a, a robot that can move around the patient uh, with fairly high speed, but can still deliver the radiation with less than one millimeter of targeting error. We have some um, x-ray cameras in the ceiling that actually take pictures of the patient, and these pictures are um, collected on the floor by image detectors. And why would we take a picture uh, or take images of the patient during the actual treatment. And, that, and the reason for this is that this allows us to um, track any patient movement during the treatment and adjust for that, that movement. So the main advantage of the CyberKnife is that it's a frameless system, does not require any rigid immobilization, and, uh, but it can still maintain the same level of, of accuracy uh, because it, it is able to track detect and compensate for patient movements. So the, uh, when you're talking about um, stereotactic uh, radiosurgery, I think it's important to understand what the expectations of this treatment are. Because uh, radiation involves zapping the tumor without getting any tissue, um, you need to um, be cognizant of, of that fact. So, the, one of the questions that I ask a meningioma patient when they're debating radiation in the form of stereotactic radiosurgery versus surgical resection is that 
how comfortable are you as the patient with, uh, with the concept of the tumor still being in your head but dead? Or are you the type of patient that needs the tumor completely removed from your body? If you fall into the latter category where the tumor needs to be removed, then surgery is going to be the recommendation. If you're comfortable with us killing the tumor um, and having a dead scar at the location of the tumor, uh, but still being visible on the MRI scan, then a stereotactic radiosurgery is a good option. Another expectation is how important is it for you as the patient to have a pathology report? We know that the vast majority of meningiomas are benign, but keep in mind that when you do stereotactic radiosurgery to treat your meningioma, you are not obtaining any tissue. So there will be no pathology report. We are going specifically by the appearance of the tumor on the MRI scan in terms of making decisions. So if you are a patient who states that it is extremely important for you to have an actual pathology report, then tissue needs to be obtained and that would involve surgical resection. A, a third uh, factor that comes into um, expectations is the tumor size and location. And are both of those appropriate for the treatment you are considering? There are some meningiomas which require surgical resection based upon size and location and patient symptoms. There are other patients that uh, have meningiomas that could easily be treated with stereotactic radiosurgery. So it's important to have a discussion um, to determine whether or not your meningioma is a candidate for uh, radiation in the first place. And then lastly, how does your age affect a uh, treatment decision? Uh, sometimes uh, patients um, have uh, significant uh, medical issues uh, that occur as a result of aging. And in these particular patients, using an outpatient non-invasive treatment such as stereotactic radiosurgery may be preferable compared to surgical resection in the operating room. So let's talk about uh, size criteria for your meningioma. Small to medium sized meningiomas, typically up to three centimeters uh, in size or about 1.5 inches in size are candidates for what we call single session radiosurgery. So it will be one treatment of perhaps 30 to 45 minutes. Larger meningiomas up to about five centimeters, so that's about two inches, um, can often be treated with radiosurgery, but in this case, we may use multiple sessions. You may require three consecutive days of treatment, or in some cases, as many as five consecutive days of treatment for us to get the radiation into your tumor safely. Any meningioma that is large enough that is causing pressure on your brain and therefore resulting in symptoms is something that we would call mass effect. And these uh, types of meningiomas are not ideal for radiosurgery. It's important to obtain surgical resection to get the pressure off the brain. So I'm gonna show you just two kind of extreme examples. This first example here is a very large meningioma there. It is putting significant pressure on the brain. This tumor is too large for stereotactic radiosurgery and this patient will be recommended to undergo surgical resection. On the flip side, this patient on the right here has a very small meningioma. This is well within the size criteria for stereotactic uh, radiosurgery, and uh, therefore um, that could be easily recommended to this patient. Uh, this is a, um, a, a picture um, 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 from um, one of the um, uh, Johns Hopkins uh, neurosurgery um, uh, publications that shows um, meningiomas can occur in different locations. So um, we can see that um, each of these um, circles is a meningioma and we can see that they can occur in different parts of the brain. And how we treat uh, these uh, meningiomas, surgery versus radiation, uh, in part depends upon uh, the location uh, as well as the size. So we know that small tumors that are usually asymptomatic um, can be good candidates for radiosurgery if the patient chooses to proceed. Now, one may argue that why treat a tumor that's not causing any symptoms and the rationale for uh, treating a tumor in this situation is that the tumor may grow over time and may cause symptoms as it enlarges. And at that point, you may no longer be a candidate 
for radiation because now you have a tumor that's larger and putting pressure on the brain. So when you're talking about stereotactic radiation, um, a small to medium sized tumor that is minimally symptomatic is often the best target for treatment. Larger tumors that are causing symptoms can uh, uh, result in symptoms such as seizures, uh, weakness, speech difficulty, memory loss, or headaches from increased pressure. And in those situations, such as this large meningioma shown uh, on the right here, these patients are best treated with surgery and not uh, stereotactic radiation. So uh, in general, um, you know, while we're talking today about stereotactic radiosurgery, I did wanna uh, step back and, and talk about the three general options for management of your meningioma. The first is uh, what's called watchful waiting, and that involves following the tumor with periodic MRI scans. Um, the, uh, this involves uh, um, observing the tumor to see if it changes over time and then intervening if it changes. The primary downside with observation is that meningiomas are tumors, and so by definition, may grow over time. And by watching the tumor, you run the risk of having to deal with a larger tumor uh, several years later. Surgical resection is the alternative to radiation. I'm gonna present one slide on the advantages and disadvantages of surgery, and then we'll come back and, and focus on the advantages and disadvantages of stereotactic radiosurgery. So uh, for surgery, the, this is resection of your meningioma in the operating room uh, under a general anesthetic. Um, the uh, advantages of surgery is that you obtain tumor tissue for the pathologist who can then study it under a microscope and tell you and confirm that this is a meningioma. There are a few um, percentages of meningioma that can be more aggressive. And in this situation, pathology will tell you whether you have a more aggressive meningioma. The other advantage of surgery is the tumor is um, resected immediately at the time of surgery. So there's no waiting for the results of the treatment. The tumor's uh, removed up front and the normal brain tissue is decompressed so that if you're having any symptoms related to pressure of the tumor on the brain, those symptoms will be alleviated uh, by the resection of the meningioma in the vast majority of cases. So what are the disadvantages of surgery? Um, surgery can vary from one hour to many, many hours, depending upon the size, complexity, and location of your tumor. And then after surgery, there is a recovery period um, that is necessary, a period of time in which the patient will feel tired and not have a lot of stamina, in part from some of the anesthetics that are uh, given at the time of surgery. And this recovery period, while it can average one month for most patients, it can be shorter or longer depending upon the size and complexity of the uh, tumor and the length of the surgery that is done. Uh, and then last, uh, surgery on the brain has risks based upon the size and location of the tumor and the age of the patient. And these risks need to be factored into the equation when uh, recommending uh, surgery for a patient's meningioma. So the last slide I'm gonna talk about today is the uh, um, advantages and disadvantages of uh, radio surgery. We've talked about the various machines that have uh, used to deliver radiation to the tumor. And we've talked about which tumors are potentially candidates uh, for stereotactic radio surgery. But let's talk now about the advantages and disadvantages of radio surgery treatment for your meningioma. The primary advantage of radio surgery is that it's an outpatient non-invasive procedure. So if you choose radio surgery for your meningioma, you're, you don't have to uh, have um, a, a, a surgical procedure in the operating room. There's no downtime or recovery for the patient. We saw in the last slide that after surgery, there's a period of recovery. Um, and with radio surgery, there is there's no period of recovery at all. You, you can immediately resume your, your activity. The major disadvantages of radio surgery is that uh, a meningioma by being a slow growing tumor takes two to three years to really die from the radiation and the, the this is a concept that sometimes patients initially have a hard time understanding they want to understand why if you're radiating a tumor why it doesn't die immediately and, and the rationale for this is that a slow growing tumor like a meningioma um, develops slowly and then dies slowly after radiation. 
we know that faster growing tumors like cancer die very quickly after radiation, but a slow growing tumor dies slowly after radiation. So um, this is why radiosurgery is not typically recommended for patients that have significant neurologic symptoms, because uh, if you have those symptoms related to pressure of tumor on the brain, then waiting two to three years for your tumor to die is, is too long a period of time for us to uh, 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 wait to see resolution of the symptoms. Uh, a second disadvantage of radiosurgery is that as your tumor dies from the radiation, it can release inflammatory factors and kind of irritate the tissue in the brain right around the tumor. And this can cause some fluctuations or flare-ups of your symptoms. So let me give you an example of this. Let's say a patient um, had their meningioma diagnosed as a result of headaches. Uh, and they had headaches off and on uh, prior to treatment. If you radiate the meningioma as it dies, the inflammation from the dying tumor may cause flare-ups of the patient's headaches. And for a period of time during the active dying process, typically during the first one to two years after treatment, those headaches may, um, may fluctuate, um, potentially even increase in frequency and severity as the tumor dies. Now, the vast majority of patients do not have flare-ups of their symptoms, but a, a reasonable subset of approximately 25% of patients do have these flare-ups. And so I make sure that we discuss this as a part of the expectations for patients undergoing stereotactic radiosurgery for their um, uh, meningioma. Uh, the uh, third disadvantage of radiosurgery we've already talked about is that no pathology is established. And so patients that undergo radiosurgery for your meningioma uh, need to be comfortable with that fact. So we're going by your MRI scan, by the way the tumor looks. We say this is a high probability of a benign meningioma, but you will not have that complete 100% certainty on a pathology report. And lastly, a radiosurgery cannot be used for large tumors. And I showed that um, uh, in a couple of the previous slides, the, the size of meningiomas that are too large for radiosurgery. So this um, is one of the reasons why if you have a smaller meningioma that is not causing any symptoms or just having minimal symptoms, you might want to consider radiosurgery before the tumor gets too large for treatment because once the tumor becomes too large for radiation treatment, your only option at that point will be surgery. So there is a window of time um, for which a, a patient with a meningioma that meets size criteria for radiosurgery can undergo radiosurgery, usually it's on the order of several years, um, but it's a finite window and at some point your tumor may become too large for radiosurgery treatment. So I want to thank you for your time and attention uh, today as we discussed uh, the, um, the use of stereotactic uh, radiosurgery um, to treat uh, meningiomas. I hope you found this uh, webinar helpful. Thank you.